but it's the only way you're going to have a sexual relationship. When there is sex and there is a child, that child has rights. Right? The woman has rights, the man has rights, the child has rights, but it comes about through a contract, something that's signed up front that people understand what it's all about. So, the answer to the question is, that doesn't exist in Islam. Now, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> They're going to say, yeah, we're talking about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and blah, 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 and his relationship with one of his wives, and she was a little girl. Oh, hold it. Let's go back. It was a marriage. And let's go and look at the text itself. I told you, in Islam, we can prove what we're saying. We have the proof. Let's look. You're going to go to Sahih al-Bukhari, and you're going to pull up a statement in there, in English, translation, talking about Aisha, and she's six years old. Okay. But did you know that that's not what it says? It doesn't say sex anywhere in there. And by the way, this is on her authority. She's the one narrating this. So before we go any further, I'm going to ask you, do you accept Aisha as being a truthful source of information? Because if you don't, there's no point in going any farther. And if you are going to accept what she says, are you going to accept everything she says? Or just what you want to hear? Because she also said, La ilaha illallah. She also said there's no God to worship except Allah. Do you believe that? Are you going to accept that? Never mind. Let's just keep moving. She tells us in this authentic hadith, teaching or story in Islam, that she was outside playing. She's playing in the dirt, having fun. And her mother, now listen to this, her mother comes to her and takes her inside. Who's inside? Inside is her father. And her father is talking to her father's best friend. And distant cousin, which happens to be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him. There is something being presented or offered here, which is marriage. The father is offering her hand in marriage to his best friend. But it didn't happen because she said, and read it for yourself, she went back outside and was playing in the dirt. Why didn't it happen? And what did really happen? And when did it happen? The answer to these questions and more are coming up in the next part of this program, the next segment. So be sure you stay tuned to hear the answers to this when we return with Lifting the Fog. We'll be right back after this. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, we're back. You're watching Lifting the Fog. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and we've been talking about a very serious subject. The general topic, of course, is the rights and the limitations in Islam. But additionally, we've been talking about the position of the women and specifically dealing with this question mark of what is the relationship here between Muhammad, peace be upon him, and a young girl. Because the accusation comes that how can you be in a religion where a 53-year-old man is having sex with a 6-year-old girl? And we found in the first segment that absolutely this is a lie. It's not true. There is nothing like this in Islam. We found that Islam does not permit any kind of sexual relationship outside of marriage. So the first thing we have to find out about is about marriage. And we discussed that to some extent. Then we mentioned the person who actually is relating or narrating the story to us is who? It's Aisha herself, and she is the wife of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Let's look at their specific condition about this man and this woman together, and what was the true relationship, and how did it come about? We spoke of a hadith where we found that she was six years old, and her mother had brought her into the house 
so that she could hear her father offer her hand in marriage to his best friend, which happened to be the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Uh, peace be upon him. Uh, but she tells us that she went back outside because it didn't happen. Let's look in the Quran and see what we find about this. Chapter 4. Now, we're talking about An-Nisa. Chapter An-Nisa, chapter 4 of the Quran is dealing with the women. Look at verse number 19. If you have a translation, if you don't have, go to our website and get one. They're free. Download. Put it in your computer. Verse 19 says, The believers, oh you who believe, you cannot inherit women against their will. As we discussed in previous programs, it was a practice of the ignorant pagans, the Mushrikeen of the Arabian Peninsula, that they would try to inherit the children's wealth. And what they would do, let's say, for instance, that some parents die, and here's a six-month-old girl or an 18-month-old girl, a baby, and he can say, that's my wife, and just claim her as a wife to do what? To take her wealth away. So now it comes that, no, you can't do that. If you look in the first part of this chapter, you'll find that that's exactly what it's talking about in dealing with the wealth of these little girls, that you're not permitted to marry these little girls to steal their wealth or mingle it with your money. And when the subject of marriage comes up, marry other women. But we're not on that subject tonight. We already talked about that. But this particular verse here in verse 19 is saying you can't inherit these women against their will. You're not allowed to get married to these girls until they're old enough to make a choice. And they're not old enough to make a choice until what? Until they are old enough to have a baby. Now, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the example for us throughout the rest of history till the last day to see how to deal in these particular instances so that we can give these rights and stay within these limitations. Here's a girl. Let's say that she's an orphan. Can I marry her? Well... Is she mature enough to have a baby? No. Then no, you can't marry her. Because there's nobody here to sign for her to say that, okay, this is my daughter, you can have her. She has nobody. So it has to be that her parents are there or somebody responsible for her, and she has to be old enough to do what? To have a baby. And that is why when Aisha was only six years old, that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, obviously did not accept these terms because the girl isn't old enough. Not that he didn't want to be married to the daughter of his very best friend, his lifelong companion, which was Abu Bakr. That was not the reason. Because in those days, if you would reject a marriage offer, or if you turned down an offer that was being made in marriage for somebody in your family, it could cause a big tribal scene, a big problem. But here is Muhammad who is not marrying, peace be upon him, not marrying the daughter of his best friend. And there's only one reason why. Because it wouldn't be considered right in Islam. She's not old enough. Because keep reading, you find another hadith in Sahih Bukhari, another story, and it's clearly stating now she's older. Several years have gone by, and the similar situation takes place. And they bring her into the house, and now she is old enough to have babies, she has started her menstrual cycle, and now the example for us comes that, yes, as soon as they're old enough to really be a mother, to have a baby, that's the earliest they can be married. And it was offered again, and it was accepted by Muhammad, wasalam, peace be upon him. But watch this. She, again, talking about Aisha, radiallahu anhu, may Allah uh, accept from her, tells us that they were married. Married, married. Focus on this word marriage because that's what they had, a marriage. And she says that when they were married, they played together. They had fun. They romped together. They chased each other. They had races. She talks about this herself. And he, peace be upon him, talks about it to his companions to mention that if you have a chance to marry a virgin girl, then raise her up and have fun with her and play with her. The emphasis was on what? To have a companionship in developing this love between each other. She's the one who talks about sex in other hadiths. And she narrates over about 2,200 roughly authentic hadiths or stories coming from her. Many of them dealing with the relationship of a man and a woman. And yes, she talks about sex in the most beautiful and sweet way. 